try to investigate what, what effects it has when it comes to planetary-wide motion, uh, especially for fluids. And I think this is important for us as astronauts because, or as aspiring astronauts, because um, a lot of us will try to get a pilot's license one day and then record all this for us is a big thing when it comes to weather. So um, I hope you understand it now and help us when we try to get that pilot's license later on. Um, and there's also, I think there's a common misconception about the Coriolis Force and that being that it is responsible for the direction that toilets drain in the northern and south, south, southern hemispheres. So I don't know if you guys have heard that before. I think it's most popular portrayed on The Simpsons. So I'm going to kind of debunk that common myth. Hopefully you guys will believe me. Okay, so just to set up um, to kind of get us in the framework of what exactly the Coriolis Force is, let's do a thought experiment. So, um, I, oh, I, say, I say on the slide there, imagine throwing a ball from the equator to the pole. What I really meant was from the North Pole to the equator. So maybe that's a little bit backwards. But so let's imagine we're on the North Pole and we're throwing a ball to the equator. Okay? So um, since the Earth is rotating, as the ball is traveling, the Earth rotates underneath it. And because the pole rotates slower than the equator, that ball will be deflected. So, say I'm at the North Pole and Will's at the uh, at Florida, say I'm throwing a ball to him. The Earth is rotated, so it doesn't actually land to him, it lands a little bit right of him, right? Because the Earth is rotating counterclockwise. So that's exactly what uh, is meant by the Coriolis force. So it's a tendency for motion to be deflected when you're looking at uh, planetary wide scales. Okay. All right, so, um, so what exactly do we mean by the, the Coriolis force? Well, um, for, first off, when we say force, we don't actually mean like a physical force, like me pushing on this table, or like the force of gravity, or the electromagnetic force. It's, a, it's what we call a fictitious force, and it uh, completely results because we're in a rotating reference frame. So again, back to that ball example, if you're off of the Earth, say, um, at, at a distant star, and you could make out that me throwing the ball to Will, you'd see it going in a straight line. But it's because we're on the Earth rotating with the Earth, and that's why we see it deflected. And I think this video here um, is a pretty good example of, of that perspective. Okay. So there used to be a bunch of kids um, throwing the ball on a merry-go-round. And you see that they're pushing the ball straight in front of them, but the ball is deflected. Okay. Once again, they're pushing the ball straight up, but because um, the merry-go-round is rotating, the ball is deflected. In this case, it was deflected to the left because that uh, rotation was clockwise. Okay, um, so just a summary of what the effect of the Coriolis force is. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, the effect is that motion is deflected towards the right. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite. It's deflected towards the left. Because again, you're thinking, if you're looking up at the Earth from the southern hemisphere, it, lo it looks like it's rotating clockwise, so the effect is opposite, it deflects to the left. Okay. Um, so now, a little bit of a mathematical description of fluid motion. This is kind of my area of expertise. I'm a grad student in applied math, and um, fluid motion is one of the things that I look at. So this equation here represents the conservation of momentum for fluids, and I know you guys, I don't even know if Jay's seen it yet, but um, it's something that I deal with every day, so I'm quite familiar with it. Um, basically, it's Newton's second law for, for, for fluids. Okay? The first term here, the du dt, that's like the acceleration of the, flu of the fluid. Um, don't worry about the du dt part, that's called material derivative, and it's just a special, uh, a special derivative for, for fluids. The second term here is that's what the Coriolis force is. So we take this uh, F times K at the unit vector in the vertical direction, cross it with U, and that's that's the dis mathematical description of the Coriolis force. Okay, and that's all equal to the, uh, pressure, the pressure gradient force, the gra force of gravity, and then the force of friction within the fluid. And that friction force is um, important on on scales clo like close to the sur uh, surface where there's a lot of friction and interaction with the surface. Okay, and the Coriolis parameter is represented by F here, and that is the um, two times the rotation rate of the Earth times sine of the latitude. Okay, so you 
because again the rate of rotation of the Earth is different at different latitudes, um, the Coriolis parameter takes different values. And is the yeah. K vector straight up? In yeah, K is pointing out of the surface, so at the poles, point straight up, and then it, it's in line with the gravity. 